Peace family, Dynasty Mirror, search for Uhuru. Uh, we are live this early Saturday morning, but it's afternoon in Ghana. What time is it? Like uh, 1 o'clock, 1.30? It's about 1.36 right now, brother. All right. Well, it's, family, uh, oh, hold on, my bad. Hold on one second. Let me, uh, uh, we are live this early. All right, sorry about that. Already, always ready 24-7. You are first. Yes, you are. So we have the brother, Samori Kamara with us. Samori Kamara, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me, brother. I was, I've was i been looking up to you for a couple of years, man. You're running back and forth to the continent. I said, I'm trying to be like this dude. Oh, man. And write, and write, and write books also, man, because, um, you know, me and my daughter, we will read a couple of your books, man, before bedtime. Oh, so, brother, brother it, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. That, that, that means libation time, brother, you know? <sighs> that means a lot. But you but you there permanently, though. I'm trying to get like you now. Yeah, man, I'm here. I'm here, brother. So, I mean, you actually live in there. Are you in Accra? Like, where, where are you at? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm in I'm in a crowd. I'm in a crowd um, right behind the university uh, in the Westlands or West Lake Gone area. OK. OK. Now, now, how how's your experience been so far? Like what what made you want to relocate there full time from um, from New Orleans? Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, you know, I've been on this black power stuff, man, on this on, on this consciousness thing. This that's what people would call being woke these days. For, for a while now, man. And um, whenever, you know, whenever you come into consciousness, man, Ghana is, is always there. I mean, you, if you talk about Pan-Africanism, you got to talk about, you know, Kwame and Kuma, you know, you talk about Garvey and Garvey is trying to go back to Africa. You you see all the Dinka symbols mm -hmm. and, and the things that we wear or, or, or the art that we make when we come in into a different kind of consciousness. So, you know, it, Ghana was always there. But when I was a teacher, I was a professor at, at Dillard University Okay, um, I, and I have, I have my own school, of course, at uh, Kamali Academy. And whenever I would teach, man, I mean, every semester, every class, it did not fail. You know, one one of the students would say, "Listen, man, it's the first day of class, second day of class. I, I can see that you love Africa. You all about that black stuff. Why don't you move to Africa?" Right. I'm, I'm, and listen, listen, I'm getting it now. Yeah. I'm in corporate America, and uh, one of my coworkers asked me the same question: "Like, man, when you move in Africa, you go over there all the right. time." That's, so, it, yeah. that's it, man. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to I had to always answer that question. I always had to deal with that. I say, you know, I would say things like, you know, I'm trying to be like Harriet, man. I'm trying to free my people before I leave and all this kind of stuff. But really, I had to I had to think about it. I really had to right. think about, yo, why not move? You've right. been talking this stuff all this time. You say you, you got the spirit of one of our ancestors who said that they would you know, eventually return home. Why not move? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the latest impetus, the, the last impetus that, that that really moved me to make that that jump was I was reading a book about um, it was something about five things you need to learn before you die or something, you know, right. self-help, you know, junkie in terms of in terms of books. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions they said was they say that really a lot of times we regret the things that we don't do more than the things that we do do right. in terms of our life when we get older. And so they asked the question, if you look back on your life in 30 years, what will be the one thing that you will be most disappointed that you didn't do? Mm -hmm. And immediately living in Africa for, for, for a time, you know, came to my mind, man. So I decided that was in December of, of 2014. I decided instead of buying my ticket for March 2015 to go and visit for two weeks, I said, I'm gonna buy my ticket for August and make that permanent jump. Wow. Wow. Now you have you had a uh, or have a family in America. You have a son, uh, a daughter, correct. a daughter. I'm sorry, a daughter. Yes. Correct. Uh -huh. uh, how has that been as far as living in Ghana and knowing and having your daughter in um, in a, in the U.S.? It's it's been it's definitely been up and down. But when I made the decision, man, when I made the decision, I made the decision because I knew I wanted to to go to go to to Ghana to come to Africa and build something for my little princess, man, where she can be the princess of her kingdom, mm. you know? And I, and I didn't really think that I, I would be able to build that, you know, in the United States of America, but I also had the the confidence of her mom that, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go first. And and then you guys will will, will come in a couple months. Okay. You know, well, that that situation didn't necessarily um, work out. She did come, she did bring, you no know, leeway, uh, my daughter who's five now, when she was three, she bought her, you know, to Ghana and she left her there. She left her here for three months with her Baba because she knows I'm a great Baba, uh -huh. you know. Um, and we've since decided to to have joint custody where I have her for six months out of the year and her mom has her for six months out of the year. And so she spends four months out of the year here in Ghana and I spend two months in the States with her. 
Oh, wow. 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 Now, are, are you and the mother? Oh, well, you have joint custody. So you and the mother aren't necessarily together, correct? No, no. Because I mean, no, no, I, I, <laughs> I met me a beautiful African queen here in, okay. in Ghana from Sierra Leone, man. So oh, she'll wow. be my wife soon enough. Okay, that's perfect, man. Because I know a lot of brothers are are uh, are struggling, me myself included, as far as making that jump permanently, knowing you have family here in America. You just don't want to leave them here in America because of just what, what, what the climate is like uh, here in yeah, America. Yeah, man, it's tough. It's tough, man. It, it's tough. Um, but again, I felt like I had that spirit over my ancestors, you know, uh, to, to to come on back home. But I also wanted to, you know, show my daughter the example, you know, that that you can go. You know, you, you can you can follow your passion, you can follow your purpose, you can follow your dreams, you know, and make things happen. But again, you know, when I first left, I thought that, you know, they will be they will be here as well. So that was going to be a little bit easier, but it hasn't worked out in, in that way. But it's still been a beautiful situation. It's definitely hard to parent from three thousand, six thousand, however many miles away I am. Right. Um, but but we're, I think me and her mother, were doing a good job of the co-parenting piece at this moment. OK. All right. Perfect. So. Um, you're, you're at Dillard, brother. If you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. how old are you? How old are you? If you don't mind me asking? I'm 36. 36. 36. Okay. Do you, do you regret not making a jump sooner? No, no, not, not at all. Not at all, man. I mean, when, when, when you, when you look at the folks who have repatriated, I mean, the vast majority of them are older, right. older black folk, man. You right. know what I'm saying? Many of them are retired, you know? So I felt like I, I wanted to move. I want to move now when, when I'm, still young enough to to really really enjoy it not saying that the older folks can enjoy it. i'm sure they you know they, they're doing their thing but i definitely want to move at a, at a younger age and my journey so far is what led me to move at that time so if i change my journey then maybe i would move a little bit earlier or maybe i wouldn't man but i, I am i'm comfortable right now i have no regrets in terms in terms of when i moved to ghana the situation which is great let me tell you the story about really oh, go ahead, you know, outside that book um, and when I was at Dillard University, I had the opportunity to take students on study abroad for two years in a row. Okay. Well, the second year I took students to, to, to Ghana, we were touring the University of Ghana and, and we're walking around the campus and out of nowhere, I hear this guy just say, Samori, Samori. I'm like, what is going on here? You know, I, I know, I know I'm popular, but I know I was international like that, you right. know? And so this guy, the guy walks up and he's like, yo, you Samori, right? You, you got the school, come out of the academy. Well, this brother knew me from, from Kamali Academy. He also knew me from a YouTube show that I had with my main man, Dr. Amari Johnson. Um, we called it Make It Plain, the People's Talk thing. We had about six, 60 episodes mm -hmm. on, on YouTube. And so he knew me from there. So we, we hung out a couple of times while, while I was in Ghana at that time. And he said, listen, I want you to come to Bermuda to, to come and speak about African-centered education because he was from Bermuda. He was getting his uh, master's or PhD in, in psychology here in Ghana. And so I say, hey man, send me a ticket. You know, and I'm, you know, black people talk, yo, I want you to come on down, man. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly you out. Mm -hmm. So it, Matt, he flew me out. He flew me out in uh, in 2014, August, you know, to Bermuda for a whole week in that beautiful place, man, talking black talk, talking about opening an African center school there. Mm -hmm. And so when I decided to move, I was talking with him, he said, man, let's be roommates. And so he made it really, really easy for me to to come on out here and not have to worry about necessarily housing and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Now, any, have you ran into any, uh, I would say adversity since you, um, since you've been in, in Ghana at all? Adversity. When, when I first got here, man, the, the, the light situation was crazy. The light situation was, it was 12 hours on and 24 hours off. Wait, wait, wait. Right? And so, cause when I was out there, I didn't have, I didn't have any issues with electricity at all. What you were, you were here in, in Ghana? Yeah, I was in Accra. I was I was just there in November. Uh, oh no no no. So so now when when I first moved here in 2015, it was crazy like that. Now it's it, it's it's very very stable. Lights barely ever go off now. But when I okay. first got here, that piece was was definitely an adjustment for me to make. Man, I just had to make sure I had my my laptop and my phone and my internet, you know, charged up for for a day, a whole day, mm -hmm. you know, because the lights were going to be out. Um, but that was that was really the the only adversity, man. And and that was that was just something I just had to get used to. And I think being here in Ghana, man, being here in Africa in general, has definitely made me more uh, appreciative of, of, of certain things. But also made me a lot more anti fragile. When mm -hmm. when lights go out, when when stuff don't work out, man, you know, it makes you a lot more patient. It right. makes you a lot more resilient. You know, so I don't think some people can can handle certain things that might happen here uh, on a continent. 
But other than the lights, man, nothing has really been adverse for me. It's been a beautiful thing. Uh, somebody in chat room, uh, Ochun uh, Ajay, says he's been watching your videos recently. Interested in your academy? Is it for homeschoolers? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Let, let, so let's let's speak on your uh, Kigali Academy, correct? Kamali, Kamali, Kamali. I'm sorry, Kamali, Kigali. That's the, that's the capital of uh, Rwanda, right? Or Rwanda, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Let, let, let's speak on that. Uh, since somebody brought it up in the chat room. Oh yeah, man. So you know, Kamali Academy. You know, we had a physical school for six years in New Orleans. Oh wow. Uh, okay. When I moved, when I moved to Ghana, I just took everything online. So we have courses, we have uh, workbooks, which uh, a lot of people are using across, shit, across the world. Really, South Africa and and uh, London is some of our biggest supporters in terms of that outside of the U.S. And um, we also have we also have curriculum, online curriculum for for from from preschool all the way to to eighth grade and we also have a pdf curriculum from uh kindergarten all the way to to 12th grade for our folks who are who are ready and willing to to homeschool their own children mm -hmm. you know i just saw an, an article about you know some black parent was saying that if they arm white teachers in the schools i'm taking my baby out my black if son they, if out they are, like, if they are what if they arm if they arm white oh, teachers oh, oh yeah absolutely absolutely because i mean that's you know, going to give them excuses to shoot black kids but I, but i'm saying why be reactive why not be proactive? Uh -huh. they, you should take them out. Should take them out now. Have not white teachers and black teachers been wielding the the, the weapon of miseducation and 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 cultural misorientation and committing menticide to our children for years and years? Why not take them out now? Why wait for for that to happen? You think what I'm saying? And so, and if you're thinking about making that happen, you know, Kamali Academy is here, you know, to to help you make that happen at KamaliAcademy.com or KamaliAcademyStore.com. We also have uh, coaching, you know, online coaching uh, for for parents and, and people who want to even start their own schools, wherever they are, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, so you, you've been keeping up as far as what happened in uh, Florida with the uh, school shooting, correct? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy. A lot of these schools don't even have money to properly keep their facilities running, but now all of a sudden they got money for guns. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Okay. Uh, Ochu wants to know if, if it's accredited and can it be transferred to colleges? Okay. So number one, accredited by who? Yes, the curriculum is is accredited by the thousands upon thousands now of, of, of black parents all over the country. And as, a, as I said, overseas mm -hmm. who are using our curriculum to help their children get an education for liberation and not subordination. Okay. Does it, does it transfer to college, transfer to college? Absolutely. Many, Many parents who have used Kamali Academy's curriculum have sent their children on to college. Kamali Academy is basically a curriculum to help you do your job a little bit better. Okay. So you you will still be the main teacher. Kamali Academy, you know, our situation is not a situation where you're just going to sit your your eight year old down in front of the computer and they're just going to do their work while you're off doing something else. Now nah, we're helping you educate your children and we're just making it a little bit more organized for you. Uh, and, and, and we've done a lot of the, the so-called African centered work for you so it can be a lot easier. You, you know, Samara, we were having a debate yesterday um, on online. In, as far as um, education in Ghana, is uh -huh. it African centered or is it still more European um, centered? And why do you think they don't properly teach about the uh, uh, slave trade? Why is it just surface level when they teach about the slave trade in uh, in Ghana? If they teach about it at all, right? Uh, the, my point. Yeah, the, the, curric the curriculum here in, in, in Ghanaian schools is totally Eurocentric. Uh -huh. I mean, it's 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 really horrible. Our children they they learn so much about 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 London that they don't even know what ocean is right outside their backyard. Right. Uh, you actually you ask some school children what what ocean is that right there? They can't even tell you many of them. Right. Um. It, it's it's horribly you know Eurocentric, and that's why we started an African centered school in Africa. Can you believe that? An African center school in Africa, um, but the students come to our school saying they have never even heard of many of the things that we're talking about, and it can just be basic stuff, you know. So no, they don't. They don't get that history. They don't get that story. You know, our people are still beholden to the authority of Europeans, and they just like somebody asked you, you know, asked me on on the, on a the chat there. Is your school accredited, right? Right. People here in Ghana want to know: Will my bit? Will Europeans, you know, say that they're educated if they go to your school? Because we care about other people's validation instead of our own. Exactly. 
you got a point there. Uh, what are you doing to, I guess, grow uh, Kamali even more? Like, will you ever, uh, I guess, build a brick and mortar again, or is it just be strictly online? I mean, it's 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 online right now, man. I, I didn't want to come to Ghana as you know, acting like I had all the answers, so I, I didn't want to do a, a school school with, with Kamali Academy. But we have started a you know homeschool collective here in Accra, and we call it Abibi for Hodie. Adisuya Abia, which means African Liberation School. Afri um, Abi for Hodie is African Liberation, and mm -hmm. we call it the African Liberation School. And so we've we, we've developed that with Dr. Obadale Cambone and, uh -huh. and his wife uh, Kala Cambone and myself and with some other parents around here because it's something that is definitely needed. And we're trying to make the school a tree immersion school. Tree is the most popular African language here here in Ghana, man. So we want our children to. To shit, speak speak African, think African, and and you know, and be African as much as possible. Shout out to uh, Killing Cash in the uh, in the chat room. Also, shout out to uh, Doug as well. Um, so, what? Why? Why do you think? I guess because I mean, it's I don't know how many African countries you've been to, but it's pretty much similar in all other African countries where the education is not African centered. Why? Why mm -hmm. is that? I mean, ask the question, I mean, because we believe that the European will always be in control of the world, uh -huh. I mean, because we believe that we will always be subordinate or subservient to other folks. If, 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 if we understood that, that we can be powerful, if we understood the, the, the strength of our own legs, we would never get down on our knees and, and give other people authority to tell us what we need to educate our children about. Who says that your children need to know this bit of information? You know, when they're six years old, who says your children need to know this other bit of information when they're nine years old? That's some European stuff that that people have passed down for generations that we don't even need that anymore. Mm -hmm. But African people are still beholden to, you know, Europeans. Most of African countries have a European language as their official language. Right. So, you know, if you, if you're not even going to speak your own language. Of course, you're not even thinking about educating your children from your own perspective. And Europeans have done a very good job of demonizing anything African. And, yeah, African spirituality, of course, is demonized. Course. African liberation is, is demonized. And of course, African cultural thought is, is demonized. And we, the people who have gotten the education from these Europeans, have swallowed that, you know, uh, miseducation hook, line, and sinker. You know, so we can't see anything outside of, you know, well, well, I, I understand that you want them to learn about themselves, but what are they going to write for their exams when the white people want to give them a job? Right. We don't, we're not sending our children to white people to get jobs. They don't have jobs for us in the first place. We, we, we're trying to, you know, grow our children into, into world leaders. And I tell folks all the time, you know, they ask, okay, the world is not white, so why would we have our African-centered curriculum for our children? And I say, our children, if they get a thorough African-centered education, when they go out into the world, they will be able to walk with any men and women with their head held high from a position of power. And like I said before, not a position of servitude. And that's that's what we're all about with Kamali Academy, with Abibi Fahodi, Adesuya, Bia, and most African countries ain't trying to hear that at this moment. Let's speak on the religion uh, piece. Now, when I was in Accra in Ghana, there were pictures of white Jesus everywhere. <laughs> And you could tell that these pastors were, were, were definitely a uh, hustling. Uh, oh, yeah. can, can you speak on that? If you're, if you're thinking about moving to a place and, and you don't want to see why Jesus, Ghana is not the place for you. <laughs> I mean, like if, if that's going to really bother you, like, like you know, that, that might be an, an adversity. Some people, like, they come here and be like, yo, man, I can live here, man. Why Jesus is too, is too prevalent over here. That's definitely going to bother our people are possessed, man, by 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 that demon spirit uh, of Christianity. I, I, that that's what I that's what I call it, man. It hasn't helped us very much at all. But the pastors are making a lot of money from it. A definitely killing. a killing. Man. And what, what's crazy is the past. Like you know, you were speaking on how people are spooked about uh, indigenous African religion. The pastors mm -hmm. they go to the bush, the quote the the bush, the yeah, village. Yeah. And, and and speak with the uh you know the indigenous religious uh I'm pretty much they practice voodoo right yeah. and then they use that to, to to pretty much operate their their operations they're running as far as the church yeah. 
Absolutely. I mean, and, and many of the folks, when, when, when all those fails, when, when, when praying to Jesus and, and covering yourself in the blood of all that kind of stuff doesn't work, they go right back to the indigenous folk anyway. They right. go right back to the, the account for and the priest to try to, to try to figure out their situation, man. But, you know, on, 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 a, on a deeper level, our people are not practicing, for the most part, our, our own tradition. Uh -huh. they're, they're practicing Islam and of, and, of course, they're practicing tradition. I mean, uh, Christianity. I thought it was beautiful. I went to uh, Kumasi for the Aquasida Festival. Uh -huh. they, they had a day where it was just strictly uh, indigenous. I hate using the word spirituality, and yeah, yeah. It, was, it was absolutely beautiful. And then just going to the uh, Voodoo Festival in Benin, it's just mm -hmm. I don't understand how we became so brainwashed to reject that for Western religion, man. I just I don't I don't get it, man. And Africa, there's some Africans that will fight you tooth and nail and argue with you why they need jesus and why they need islam and i'm just like for god's sake like one one brother one brother told me i said what did african people um pray to or what did african people do in terms of spirituality before islam came around and he was like we did nothing we were heathens <laughs> i said okay so like you know we can't you know we can't even have a conversation no, you know so I mean, and, it, and anytime you mention you know traditional african spirituality to folks who are christian man it, it's uh it's like talking to a brick wall. Yeah. Because I was having a, a debate with some a sister from Zimbabwe. And I'm not Zimbabwe, Zambia. I mean, same thing. Like, well, Christianity has been in Africa. But I'm like, it's obvious. You know, I know there's, I know Christianity has been in Ethiopia and parts of Sudan for a while. But yeah. you can tell the difference between that Christianity, Christianity yeah. and then the Eurocentric Christianity that you, you worship or practice yeah. in Zambia. It's night and day. Absolutely, man. Not Absolutely. Day, so, so yeah. Um, and, and when, and when people say, and when people say, "Hey, man," you know that they, they stole Christianity from from African people. And I said, "Okay, if you if you believe that, why not go back to the source? Why 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 do you you know go to a version of a version of a version of a version right, go back right. to the, the original piece?" Right, and and that's my point. Is show me in a, a an indigenous African Bible from Zambia pre colonialism. Yeah, it wasn't Can't there. It can't, 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 can't produce it. Can't produce it. All right. So somebody <laughs> hey, on your uh, on your uh, Kamali Academy uh, site, can can you donate? Can people donate there? Can you donate on Kamali Academy? I don't even know if we have a donate button. If you yeah, want to donate, though, want to know they want to donate to your school. They want to know how they could how they could donate. I mean, you can you can send PayPal to Kamali Academy at gmail dot com. Okay, hold on. Let me let send me the chat. We're going to PayPal at Ali. Got it. Okay, there we go. All right, try to put that in there. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, and also, um, you know, they can help out about by letting other people know, man, who might be interested in some African centered education, who might be thinking about homeschooling their own children. You know, we have a lot of resources there, you know, to help folks as well. Okay, uh, brother Oshun Aj in in the. Uh in the chat room said he's planning to move to Ghana by the end of the next year. Can uh -huh. he use your curriculum and open a small school or a homeschool collective? How much? Absolutely. Okay. How, he, he wants to know how much would something like this cost to start up? Um, to use my curriculum? I, I, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, by the curriculum and you can use it, man. You know, we, you know, we, we say it, one curriculum for per school or per family. It's all good. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead on and use that. We want we want that information to spread and as far and wide as possible, particularly in a place like Ghana. We need more because people are, are sometimes spread out. You know, a lot of, you know, repatriates don't live here in Accra. You know, Accra is very, you know, city like. Right. And so some people, they say, look, I didn't come here for traffic and, and smog and all that kind of stuff. I came here for the bush. I came here for the peace. So right. many of them live, you know, outside of outside of Accra. So we need schools wherever. OK, so let me ask you, the. Um how do you feel about Accra modernizing? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, there's there's some things that 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 they can do in terms of efficiency that that I would love to see. I mean, I, I you know the traffic the traffic flow here is is, is horrible be, just because it doesn't seem like anybody planned for six million people to be around this area. Um, yeah, and that's about it in terms of in terms of um, my my thinking on on modernizing. I mean, maybe we can the light situation can be can be a lot better. 
And of course, the the level of poverty, you know, disparity can, you know, we, we can bring that down too in terms of modernizing that. But but that's about it for me, man. I, I would like to, I don't like it when, when people show videos of the Africa they don't show you and they just show all European type stuff. Okay, in stop, stop right there, okay. So Samar, yeah. this is my issue too. So I, I've had a couple debates with Africans on how, in my honest opinion, I feel like they're neglecting the indigenous um, parts of Africa and they're not setting the record straight when it comes to indigenous lifestyle. And they're jumping into, hey, uh, European and white people, we right. got we got skyscrapers just like you. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because I mean, like you said, the culture is in the the villages. Right, I right. Feel like uh, Africans are doing uh, a disservice by neglecting and not bringing attention to the actual culture. Because when I go to Accra, I see you can't tell the difference between Accra and Atlanta until you, people start opening up Sometimes. their mouths. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. No, man, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely with you on, on, on the idea of just showing European type things, you know, in order to say, hey, we're modern. Who are you talking to, right? If you're talking to, if you're talking to other black people, then those black people might not want to be here in Africa in the first place. You might want to go somewhere in Europe. You might want to stay in America if you're looking for America. If you're looking for okay. Europe here in Africa, you understand what I'm saying? So I, I wish they would, they would just show. As you said, man, some of the more more of the village things, man. I mean, even in the village, you can still have Wi-Fi, you know. So there's certain things that we can do to 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 be more efficient, but we don't have to be European to be efficient. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's see, if we got any more questions in the uh, in the Shima, Appreciate the uh, the super chat, brother. Do you have you have your own YouTube page by chance? YouTube, yeah, man. It's um Kamali Edu Services. Kamali Edu Services. If you just if you if you type in Kamali Academy on 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 YouTube, you you you'll get our you'll get our page. Okay. Make sure you know everybody who's on here. Hey, make sure you guys go and subscribe uh, to the brother Samori's um Samori's page. Mm -hmm. So Kamali Academy. Yeah. One second, Samori. Kanta, this is the thing, brother. When you come into the chat room, okay. If you could please like the page, I feel like what I'm bringing to you guys is a value. So if you see the value in this, like the page, Conte. That's very important. So the information get out could get out there. Because in my honest opinion, and I'm not trying to be arrogant, I don't think anybody else is doing what I'm doing. So Conte, if you're not gonna super chat, share a like. I mean, if you could just please, if you're not super chatting, share and like the page. That's all. That's all we're asking for. That's not asking much to hit the like button as you enter the uh, the chat room. Both are important. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So let, let's talk about um, some of your some of the other brands that you you have. You have the uh, clothing uh, design. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Lucari, Lucari designs. Let's let, let's 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 build on that. No. So yeah, man. When I when I when I got here. And I've been wearing, you know, shirts like this and, and African wear for a while now. Uh, but when I got here, people would always hit me up, man, where you got that shirt from? Where you got that shirt from? Right. You know, so I decided, I said, hey, man, let, let's go ahead on and, 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 and send some authentic African wear back to the folks in, in the States and, and, and other places. So we decided to start um, Lucari Designs. Uh, and my queen has um, uh, the Nima Monterey collection with Lucari new, new Designs, man, that, that, that's lacing the African African queens with that African flyness and and I'm doing my thing with with the brothers and we also have um, a subscription box and people can go to Nukari Nukari dot crate joy dot com uh -huh. dot crate joy dot com and the subscription box does 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 a couple of things for for the queens for the queens we do two skirts or, or two a, a skirt on a dress and a hair wrap each month for oh, wow. seventy five dollars oh wow right? And we deliver that African flyness right to your door. Um, and for the for the brothers, we have two two dashikis like similar to the one I, I'm wearing right now, and and that's for fifty dollars. Uh -huh. uh, and so folks can you know folks have been with us. Some of folks have been with us for two years, man. And they say they whole closet is African fly. Right. And so they have to look. They have to you know they, they can wear a different dashiki, you know, for goddamn two months. Uh -huh. You know. So so we we trying to do that, man. Trying to trying to provide. You know those kind of clothing for, for folks who are tired of wearing stuff from Thailand and, and China and and wherever right. else. Okay. You know. Now I, I was 
yelled at because I was criticizing the people who were buying fake dashikis to go see the Black Panther movie. In. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about us not holding African brands with the same reverence or regard like we do Italian and uh -huh. French and European high fashion? Well, that's real. No, that that's man. That, that's a that's a good point, man. I didn't even think about it from from that not perspective in terms exactly of just holding because, it. Because this is the thing: if I had on a pair of fake Nike Air Jordans, right? You would, you, they would talk about a clown, jump, mm. on a fake mm. Rolex watch or mm. fake Louis Vuitton shirt. Yeah, they will, they will go in on me. But I see these yeah. fake, poorly made uh, Chinese yeah. and Indian made dashikis that people are buying from Miss Lee at the right. flea market. Right. I comment on that, like, look, that's those are fake. I, I I'm, <laughs> I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. Yo, that's real though. I, you know, I never even thought about that from that perspective. Of course, I, I see it and. And, and and maybe that's the first entry into that was my first entry into to African wear, wearing those kind of things, you know, until until, you know, I learned a little bit more, you know, and I, and I began to to rock, you know, some some, you know, some original stuff. So maybe that's the first step. So maybe, maybe don't maybe don't get on them too hard. Maybe just tell them like, yo, there's I, I dig you're trying to look African fly, but there's other original, more authentic kind of brands that you could buy from. But I never thought about like. Yeah, man, we, we probably should clown them a little bit though, because that's fake. Like, yeah. what are those? Yeah, yeah, because I, that? I was I was the bad guy. I, like, I was the yeah, like yeah. I was the bad guy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, and that's what deep. about the, what about the argument? Okay, well, since you know a car print, because I know they got like was the Blisco Blisco in Ghana. Blisco, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well. Uh -huh. They say African print isn't made in Africa. So, what difference does it make? What would be your argument? Against that, are you rebuttal? So, okay, number one, there are many African prints that are made here, here in Ghana. But of course, you do you do have you know African prints that are made that are made outside, and and some of the African country you know uh, companies, particularly Ghanaian companies, have sold half of their shares or something like that to European companies or to to Asian companies for for whatever reason. But if we get the the African fabric and and and, a, and an African brother or African sister. Put that African love into it and create something like you have on right now, right, exactly. or something like I have on right now. Mm -hmm. Then, then I'm thinking that that's African. Well, it, let, you me know, stop, let me stop. So my thing is, what I tell people is, if if it's made by African hands, is African. That's what I was telling people. But go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. I think that I think that's true because then we get into so so. There's a brother here in Ghana who 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 has a car company now and he's growing it. It's called Kantanka, right? Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, the, the, some the, the people, car company. Yeah, yeah. And some people are saying, well, you know, some of the some of the, the screws and, and some of the you know some of the some of the steel and the rods he's using ain't from Ghana. It's from you know India, it's from somewhere else. I'm like, but but were well, you getting mad about the fact that the man is using some some material from other some other place, but he's trying to make an African car, he's making it in Africa? I mean, come on now. I mean, yes, one day hopefully we can get to where hey. All of the African print that we wear is from Africa. All of the tools that we use is from Africa. All the all the things that we use to make our African cars, our African phones, our African whatever, is from Africa. But at this moment, we can put if we if we make it as you just said, if an African makes it, shit, that's African. Right. Exactly. What um somebody says uh, in the chat room, uh, I can't I can't understand why Africans still organize all white parties. These parties should be all African entire <laughs> parties. What, you, what are your thoughts on that? Yo, I think I think that's a beautiful thing, man. And maybe you know, w w with the energy around Wakanda forever, right? Maybe that's you know a Wakanda forever party that might jump off. I might need to do that here in Ghana, baby. Maybe we should do a Wakanda forever party. People <laughs> will come out nice, no, for real. So check. So instead of the all white parties, let's do Wakanda forever parties and have people they gotta wear African wear. And I think I think it'll jump off. Okay, because we got the energy right now. Look, so I've been very. The movie was. Yo, yo, hold on, hold on. But but African people look beautiful in white too, though, brother. <laughs> okay, no, they do, they do, they do. But I mean, well, they, they, it can't be African print white. That's true. I got, that's true. I got an all white that's African uh, situation. Absolutely, absolutely. But I was gonna say, what are your what are your thoughts now? I've been very. Black Panther was a great movie. Don't get me uh -huh. wrong. Great movie. But what are your thoughts of it being a movie that can, I guess, unite or open up more of a, 
uh, a discussion with substance between the diaspora and Africa. Because I told people I think it's going to have the same effect as roots and coming to America, which it really didn't have uh, much of an effect. Right, exactly. But what are, what are your yeah, thoughts yeah, on yeah. that? Um, I, I'm not I think maybe the folks at that time when Roots came out, when Coming to America came out, they didn't have the, the, the technological tools we have now to really, really connect with each other across the globe. But I think I don't think the movie will do it by itself. I think it'll take folks like yourself, people who have a platform to really, really bring that conversation out. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, though, unfortunately, though, it seems like many, many African people who, who were born in America, we ain't even gonna unite with each other on the movie itself. Like we have so many people who are, you know, very, very critical, you know, uh, about the movie instead of trying to use it as a, a unifying force or, or as a, as a, as a, as a tool to teach from. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how much we, we're going to get with, with other African people. We just arguing about just the movie itself as, as if it wasn't a good movie. But the point I was making is that the people who are already serious about building in Africa, we didn't uh -huh. need the movie to do that. That's true. That's true. That's true. And I just think the other people were just enjoying the movie. Because I mean, no, I know a lot I think, of people. Okay. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. No, no, no. I think, I, all right. So there's an African proverb that says that, you know, wood that's already touched by fire is not hard to alight. Uh -huh. Right. And so, so me and you, you know, and folks who are already doing the work, it's like, yo, okay, it, you know, I, I was already on fire anyway. You throw more fire on it, I'm going to still be blazing. Right. Right. And many, but many of our people, many of our people, Hmm. Many of our people don't have that fire within them. They don't. They so don't. Maybe, maybe, I don't think it's likely, maybe, you know, a movie like that can spark something in more people's minds to really, really grow and start to do that work. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think we might have a Wakanda Forever moment where people wake up for a second and then go right back to sleep as we usually do. But maybe that can spark it. And I'm going to use it as much as I can to spark more to spark more consciousness among my people. What, um, somebody had a question in the chat room. Let me go back to it real quick. Uh, here we go. Um, hey, where's this question at? Yeah, so, oh, so what's what's the website to your, uh, to your brand, your, uh, your clothing line? Okay, Nukari Designs, that's N-U-K-A-R-I, designs.com okay. also nukari dot crate joy dot com and crate is c r a t e j o y dot com but I was gonna ask man you you now your your Wi-Fi is freaking great like what how, like who who do you use and what uh how much are you paying a month for it oh we use uh MTN which is uh one of the I guess the biggest one of the biggest phone companies here you know, in Ghana, and they have they have the Wi-Fi piece 4G. So hopefully, I'm looking good. Yeah, bro, it, it's great. I mean, it's no, it's been no hiccups because I know I was doing a. a do you know uh, Natural Ghana Girl? Are you familiar with her? Natural Ghana, not, not sure, not sure. Maybe okay. I saw her before because I had her on. I had some, some a couple other people on from Ghana, and like yours, your um, uh, shoot, your Wi-Fi is great. Yo, man, I'm living it up, yo. I got I got good Wi-Fi over here, yo. I watch we watch Netflix all day. Not all day, but we watch a lot of movies on Netflix and all that kind of stuff. So, so, so we good over here. But yeah, we use MTN. We use MTN. How, how much is it? How much is it running per month? Um, I know the about, about there. It's, it's it's about it's about ninety dollars a month, man. Just that's for not, that's not that bad. Yeah, it's, it's not that. I mean, it's some it's some worth. things here. Some things here you're gonna have to pay. You're gonna pay closer to the American price for it, and you just uh -huh. you just gonna have to. But so a lot of other things you won't. Uh -huh. So the cost of living. Is still much cheaper than it is in America. Uh -huh. you know, now, so I'm good with spending that. So, so you you stay with your your queen currently, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, you guys now you guys got a house yes, or you, okay? Now, now we now we're, we're in a three bedroom apartment right now. How much are you paying for a three bedroom apartment? If you don't mind me asking. It's 400, 400 a month. Yes, yeah, I mean you can't beat that. You can't. Beat yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's nice. I would I would give you a tour, but you know, but I'm on my little my little porch right now. It's you know, man. It's yeah. all you, you. don't have to inconvenience. It, it's all, <laughs> I, when I come, I, I'll be back. It won't be till December, but I'll be back uh, in Ghana in December. No uh, doubt, no doubt. I'll, I'll be yeah, around. I'll, uh, I'll stop by. But um, now I, I'm still confused, and I ask the same question all the time. You yourself, you're not a citizen yet, correct? 
Not a citizen yet. No, not a citizen yet. So how is it if you wanted to acquire land? Do you know that process? Now, I don't I haven't gotten too far into that process, but as a person who is not a citizen, I would have to have a, a Ghanaian partner with me to 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 make that happen. Or or I would if I did it by myself, I think I'll be able to lease land for 50 or 99 years or something like that. But I don't have all the information on that piece at all. Uh, there were last year, there were 34 repats who got their citizenship here in Ghana. And we're working on uh, a number of, and I'm one of those number of folks who's trying to get their citizenship now uh, in Ghana. So we should hear something by, I think the end, the end of this month, whether or not we, we received it. Oh wow, so how, how's that process as far as getting uh, your, your actual citizenship? Well, we, yeah. we've gone through, who are we going? Through? It's, um, it's a brother who was repatriated here in Ghana, to Ghana maybe 30 something years ago, man. And he's been, he's been a teacher to a lot of the politicians you know who who have come up here here in Ghana. So so he has their ear, and he's been talking to them about you know making a way for African people from from abroad to to come here and, and and get their citizenship. So they've been handling that part, man, going through you know the government and all that kind of stuff and making it happen. You no know man, congratulations, man. I hope I hope you get it, bro. Soon we'll see. We'll see. Now is I, you- I, have a, I have a working permit. I have a work permit right now, though a residence permit. You okay. Know, so, so I'm good. Was that was that process hard to get? I mean, was that a hard process, or is it pretty? Uh, if you if you know somebody with a business here, a guy named with a business, you know, you, you can make it happen. It'll cost about five hundred dollars to to make it happen. Okay. What um now as far as far as your brands, are there any other brands you're working on uh, that you, you're growing and and what what makes you so passionate about building African center brands? Well, number one, I mean, I, I have to I have to support myself, and I know that you know I'm in a position to, like, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not a salesman, mm-hmm. you know, I, I solve problems, you know, right. so so one of so one of the things you know I learned very early on in terms of business, actually, I didn't become a businessman until I first came to Ghana in 2013. Okay, I had my school since 2009, but when I came to Ghana in 2013, man, and when you see when you see a woman with a load on her head, a child on her back running through, you know, you know, lanes of, of traffic and all that kind of stuff to make a sale. You say, man, if she can get out there and get it, get it. Why can't I? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said, you know, we, we got, we got, you have so much available to you, you know, in the United States of America, like there's really no excuse. I can see why Africans will come from, from Africa and come to America and be like, y'all lazy. Uh-huh. Y'all ain't using this how, how y'all supposed to use this, right? You know, so when 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 I came here that first time I saw that, I was like, I was kind of disheartened because people work really, really hard here. But I was like, but everybody's but, but, a hustler. But do you, do you think they're working hard and not smart? Like what? No, no. So if, if you talk if you talk about if you talk about working smart, then then that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation. Because I mean you, you see people, you, you see four people selling the same thing right next to each other. Well that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 And, and nobody, no, no, nobody is marketing, you know, anything different. They ain't giving you nothing else. But they still working hard and I can work harder than I was. Right. Uh, so when I got back to the States, you know, people have been asking me about curriculum and curriculum. So I said, man, let, let me provide this service for for the folks. And I did so. And the folks showed up and and and, and showed out in terms of support. And they've been continuing to support it up until this day. Uh, I think African people, particularly my daughter, needs to know that that her Baba don't work for nobody else but himself, uh-huh. and, and and that she can do that. In fact, Nukari is a play on her name. So when I started that company in 2015, you know, I just asked the Facebook, you know, my my Facebook friends, yo, I want the name of this country, I mean, the name of this company, <laughs> to be something that incorporates my daughter's name. So her name is Noliwe Mali Sukari Kamara, right? And uh, and somebody was like, yo, okay, just take the S off of Sukari and just put the N on from her first name. So it's Nukari, right? And and the um and um uh, what is it called? The slogan, the slogan for, for for the brand is what's the slogan for the brand for, for Nukari? I need to look at the website. Let me look at the website real quick. Okay. But anyway, the slogan, the slogan, the slogan has her name in it. It has okay. no leeway in it. Okay. So it's so it's no live wear African mm. clothing. You dig know what I'm saying? No live African clothing. No live wear it. Mm-hmm. And so in in no you have N O, 
in where you um in in live you have l i which is you know n o l i and then in where you have w e and her name is Nolila mm -hmm. right and so that's why I chose that. You know, somebody wants to know, uh, and I guess there's been some confusion on this. Maybe you can clear it up. Yeah. What's the right of abode law in Ghana? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. The right of abode piece is is something that was was put into place, I guess, a couple of years ago, man. But it's it's a very very hard process to 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 get your citizenship through that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, the group that we are dealing with now, who got 34 repats their citizenship last year. They're, they're trying to bypass that whole right of a bowl piece because they say like right of a bowl wasn't just for African people coming from coming back from the states, right? It, right. it was it's for, it's for anybody, right? And of course, it's the same process that a Lebanese would go through. And we're like, yo, we're not Lebanese, we're not we're we're not Asian. You know, our situation is different, so we should have a different process. And so that's why the Ministry of of the Future, which is uh, the 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 organization that's been helping Africans get their get their citizenship. That's why they're working on something else outside of the right of a bold piece. Hmm. Let's see if we got any other questions in the uh, in the chat room. Mm -hmm. But oh, would you ever re consider moving back to the U.S. or is this? I mean, you're, you you'll never leave Africa. I mean, it, it's a it, it will be a hard it will be a hard sell for me, man. Um, you know. I, I visit, you know, I visit family and all that kind of stuff. But my mom worries more about me when I'm in New Orleans or when I'm in the States. I was going to ask that. What was you, when you say you were moving to Africa, how did your parents take it? Well, my mom, my, my mom has seen my growth from, you know, over the years, you know, so my mom has locks now, you know, I changed my name in 2005, you know, so it's been, it, it's been a long time coming. So she, she knew I was going along this road, man. And, and she actually came to visit me last year. That was a real big surprise. My mama really? came to Africa oh, yeah, wow. man, for two weeks, man. It, it's a beautiful thing. And she'll, and she'll be back, you know, so, so they definitely support it, man. And, you know, they'll be helping me to, 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 to build a house here, a family house so we can have, you know, something to fall back on if anything happens in, uh, in 45's America. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me ask you, if, if, if you, I'm not saying you can tell the future, but how bad do you think it could get here in America? What are your thoughts on that? Man, I think for African people, man, it's, it's already horrible, man. Uh -huh. like, I mean, I mean, so many people like it's, it's been bad, man. It's been bad already. How bad could it get? I mean, what? The police could shoot you a little bit more. <laughs> like, I, I mean, you know, they, they can put guns in the hands of the, of the white teachers and, and just because you know, a, a black boy stands up in class and voices opinion. He can get shot down in the classroom. Like, I mean, how how much worse do you want it to get? You know, I mean, the, the educational system miseducates us. The the healthcare system uh, uh, keeps us unhealthy and, and keeps us in a disease kind of state. The spiritual system keeps us spiritually dead in terms of not being an African spiritual system for us. I mean, everything in America works backwards for us. The economic system keeps us poor. You know, so it's it's the worst, man. I would tell people. Stop talking and go ahead on it and, and, and make that and make that move. Make okay. that move. So many people said, so how many people say if, if 45 becomes if, if if the orange haired guy becomes president, I'm moving to Africa. And but how they, many Negroes have moved to Africa? They didn't do it. They didn't move. They didn't do it, man. They didn't do it. Okay. But brother wants to know, uh, if you're familiar with the well, brother Amir Ra wants to know, do you know anybody in marketing in uh Ghana? Do you do marketing? Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't, I don't do marketing personally. I mean, I do marketing for my own, for my own businesses, of course, but not in in, in a con, in a company type sense. But I do know some young folks here, you know, in Ghana, Ghanaians who, uh -huh. who are working in marketing. Absolutely. Okay, so I, I'll connect you with him offline, um, okay, cool. brother Seth Poku. I think Seth, you're from Ghana, correct? Uh, another brother wants to know how do you compare the Ghana education to American education? I think both of them are garbage. Okay. <laughs> like I, I would, I would, I wouldn't send my daughter. And one of the reasons why I started my school um, in 2009, before my daughter even came around, she didn't come around until 2012, mm -hmm. um, because I wanted my, I, I knew I did not want my daughter to be going to that public food system, right? And if I bring her here to Ghana, I don't want her to go to that school. I mean, it's still beating children in school in, in Ghana, man. It, like you have a, you have a, you know, the headmaster will have a switch walking around, like get your, you know, get in line. Like it, it's a, the, the, the classroom is a lot of times overcrowded. You know, it's a very call and response kind of uh, education that they have, uh, and it's just not very—it's just not very good. 
So no, I think both of them are garbage. Okay. Okay. Then somebody else had another question. Let me uh, pull it up real quick. Um, uh, damn, where's the brother's question at? How many countries have you been to, man? Uh, I think 10. 10 in Africa? Uh-huh. I'm going. I'm, I'm gonna catch you at some point, brother. I'm trying, oh, you, I'm trying to get to every African country. Well, hold on, you you should because you live there now. Yes, that's, that's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. I'm busy. I'm getting. I'm getting more and more busier now, man. I, like as I'm as I'm setting down roots, you know, I, I got the queen there also, you know. So so it's a little bit harder for me to to travel as much as I would like to now. But I've been to six so far. Yeah, because I mean, my and I'll be in August. I'll be in Nigeria. Then in September, mm -hmm. I'll um I'll be in um. Ivory Coast to Sierra Leone. Then also in October, I'll be in Senegal and then I'm coming back to Ghana in uh, December. But I, I want to hit up Ethiopia and Sudan sometime this year too. But it's just the issue is, brother, uh, I got, I got, uh, see, I suffer from some of the same issues you as you were just speaking about. I'm, I'm in corporate America, man. And I'm just yeah, right now where it's just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to have to eventually make a move. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I think you, you, you got the talent, man, to I'm sure the wisdom to make sure that on the economic side, you're good when you come when you come to this side. Because I tell people, don't come, don't come, don't come to Africa looking for a job. Oh, even I, if you I, get a job, that too, but go ahead. Even if you get a job, they're gonna pay you in in, in terms of Ghana, they're gonna pay you in Ghana CDs. And it ain't it ain't gonna be nowhere <laughs> near what you nowhere. think that you are worth, man. So so don't come here looking for a job. Even though I have a job coaching basketball at the university. Yeah, it's it's probably I make up maybe maybe three hundred dollars a month doing that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean that that that, that ain't much. And, that, and that's a, that's an everyday uh everyday job. No, like, I mean I re I, no, I refuse. I mean I I refuse to be there. You know, eight to five kind of situation. So right. so I you know I have my school and of course I have my own businesses. So I come there in the afternoon to practice. Uh huh. That's that's, that's when I'm there. Okay. Uh, brother wants to know, are you familiar with a magazine called Suwami, S-U-A-M-E magazine in Kumasi? Suwami? I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. Okay. And I've been to Kumasi, but I haven't, I haven't spent a whole bunch of time in Kumasi. You got to go to Kumasi, bro. I love Kumasi. Now, the roads aren't the best, but I love Kumasi. <laughs> Absolutely love Kumasi. Good man. Good um, uh, Kellen wants to know, do you, uh, do you have house help and how much do you pay for them a month and do you have a driver? I don't have a driver, but I definitely have house help. Definitely have house help. And we pay our house help about $75 a month. And she's here five days a week. You know, a lot of times people have house help. They're, they're there every day of the week. We definitely wanted to give the sister, you know, you know, time off on, on the weekend. So, yeah, about $75 a week, man. And she she definitely helps out a great deal. You know, so and, but that's, 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 that's a luxury, though, that you can have in Africa that you ain't going to be able to afford somewhere else, though. Oh yeah, he can't afford that here in America, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. He can't afford yeah. that. Yeah, man. But brother, I, I, I appreciate you coming on, man. It, you know, and I, I gotta get you back on here because we gotta talk about some uh some other topics as well, since you since you deal with uh education. I really wanna build on some of the uh you know, the other topics that uh we, we brought up during this uh during this conversation. So mm -hmm. I definitely gotta get you back on here soon. Um uh, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close out. I mean, share with everybody how to get in contact with you. Uh, share with everybody, you know. Okay, when when people say you shouldn't move to Africa because Africans are trying to move here, what would be your response to that uh, that question? Um, you, you gonna do you gonna do what other people do, or you gonna do, or you gonna follow <laughs> your own path? Like, right. but but the question is, why are are Africans trying to move here? And 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 the, and a lot of the answer goes to you know America has done a very good job of their cultural imperialism. Right. The things that come through that television and through that radio is not is it's American, American, American for the most part, man. So they and they've painted America as if you know when you go to America you're gonna be like walking over money all day every day, like it's gonna be in the streets or something. And I have to let people know like that ain't that ain't the case, <laughs> you know. But also the educational system here has taught people that hey. You want to go to Europe and you want to go to to America. You want to get away from other black people. It's just like black people moving out the hood to go somewhere else and live by white people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's that same mentality. Come on, come home to come home to Africa. And it's, you have a lot more peace. You know, I mean, like, I don't think people understand. Maybe you can help them understand. But I don't think people understand 
how it feels not to have the weight of racism always on your shoulders every day, right. every second of the day. It, man, it, it's it, it's a liberating type of feeling, man, that you won't necessarily experience unless you come here to Africa. Right. It, what about the because you have a lot on the conservative right. OK, uh -huh. black 45 uh, supporters or whatnot who will say there's no such thing as racism in America. Uh, you have some <laughs> Africans that will tell you that there's no racism, that there's no concept of racism. What would be your uh, reply to that, response to that? Man, Toni Morrison said this, and, and, I, and I repeat it here. She said, to be constantly answering questions and mounting defenses about things that you know are obvious keeps you from doing the work. So right. I would tell people, man, just do your work, man. If, if people talk in that silliness, that's okay. Keep it moving. Uh huh. Cool. Hey, have you been uh, one Africa yet? One Africa? Yeah. Every time I go to Cape Coast, man, I stay at One Africa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's a cool. Yeah, so I was there. Um, I stayed with her when I when I went, man. That's a cool system, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, another question. Uh, how do you feel about the current president of Ghana? You know, man, I don't. I don't know much about um, Ado. So. Yeah, I don't I don't know much about it. I mean, I see a program that he's trying to do free, you know, free education for, you know, for school children here in Ghana. That seems to be that seems to be cool. But of course, it, it's free. But what kind of curriculum do you have there? And is it really going to liberate the minds of our people? I don't think so. I don't really I don't really get to get into as much of a politics here mm -hmm. in, in Ghana, man. I, I, I'm I'm living my best life. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I love. I'm I'm I'm, I'm coaching basketball. I'm I'm, I'm teaching. You know, Africans in the school. I'm running my businesses, and I have a beautiful queen, man. So all those things I don't really even get into anymore. Mm -hmm. Perfect, man. All right, brother. Well, uh, go ahead and close out. Let everybody know how to get in contact with you and all that good stuff. No doubt. No, well, first and foremost, man, thank you for 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 having me on, man. Searching for Uhuru. You know, I think it's, it's a it's a it's a great show, man. And you're using your platform very very well. I appreciate so again. That. Folks can go to KamaliAcademy.com or KamaliAcademyStore.com and Kamali is K-A-M-A-L-I. You can also, you know, uh, check out a couple of our clothing brands at NukariDesigns.com, Nukari.CrateJoy.com as well. I think that's about it. I think that's about it right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, right. you, you can also email me at KamaliAcademy at gmail.com. Perfect, brother. Let me let me ask you this real quick. Hey, uh, Amin Ra, are you are you free to come on tomorrow morning, Amin Ra? Uh, he's a brother in uh, Kenya that deals with education, man. I, I want to connect. Okay, okay. With him. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Or yeah. is he in Nairobi, or he's outside of? He's in Mombasa. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Well, and, and then and then oh, Kellen, I gotta ask you, man. I know I keep trying to close out, but I just gotta <laughs> ask you some more questions. Uh, Kellen, can I ask you? This is the last. We'll I have two more. I have a question, and Kellen will ask this last question. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had this happen to me before. I've had Africans here in America who told me that they don't want radical black Americans coming to Africa and to leave that radical stuff in America. But then I come to Africa, the Chinese is radical, the Lebanese is radical, the European is radical. <laughs> right, right, right. Did you get that at all as well? You know, I haven't, man. I haven't. I'm because I think I'm, I'm developing relationships with folks and and I'm talking less than than I used to talk. So I'm, I'm letting my life, you know, um, do the talking for me and, and, and do my preaching. I'm letting my walk and do my preaching, you know, but the, the college students that I'm around on the campus, man, um, they've been very receptive to these ideas about about black power and black liberation or African liberation. man. so I haven't I haven't really, really dealt with those things, you know, and people have engaged me in conversation. They've said some things that I'm that. That I thought was you know was questionable. Like many people here believe that black people, yeah, black people have all this you know all these resources and all that kind of stuff. But it took the smart white man to be able to do something with it because we wasn't doing nothing with it, and that's why he's superior to us. Now this is Ghanaians who are older, 60, 70 years old, but you also hear that from high schoolers and even college students right now today. So. Um, some of those people have began to understand a little bit differently uh, because of the conversations that, that we have had. And it's probably because of the way we come at it when we come here, you know, but also the Negroes, those African Negroes who are in the States are probably Negroes. They're probably Uncle Tom's and they don't want no radicalness anywhere. Right. You know, when I was at when I was when I was in grad school, 
you know, I went to University of Texas at Austin, finished my PhD, mm -hmm. and I knew many, you know, Africans from Ghana, from, from Nigeria and other places, and they would look at me crazy because I have African wear on every day. They say, we don't wear that, we wear suits in Africa. <laughs> I, say, I say, because you're stupid, <laughs> because you're trying to be like somebody else. Why the hell would you wear a suit and it's 85, 90 degrees every day in its piece? Like, that, that's just dumb to me. <laughs> right. But, but yeah, so I don't, I, don't even deal with, I don't even deal with those folks. I'm glad I didn't take them as the example of the kind of people I would meet here. Right, exactly. Because I, I, I had that kind of game. I had that issue when I was in L.A., man. These Africans in L.A., man, they were just, oh, my God, are you serious? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them. I mean, some were cool, but a lot of them, man, were just, I mean, the same mentality. Like, why would you wear that? You know, right, right, uh, right. Um, um, leave that radical stuff. You know, Black America, too radical. Leave that stuff in America. It's like, what, the, what are you talking about? But You're tripping. You need this. Hey, <laughs> you know, I was going to ask, are, are you free around this same time tomorrow? Tomorrow, Sunday. Uh, nope, I'm not free. I'm not free, man. I got, I got my basketball academy, and uh, and I'm coaching a semi-pro basketball team here as well. So okay, won't be All free. Right, okay, cool. We got, I got. Uh, I got to get you back on with uh, you and uh, Amin Ra to talk okay, about cool. the dangers of sending uh, your student to a school where white teachers will be armed. Uh, <laughs> we got, we got to go into detail. But, about yo, that. they already, they already on with that Eurocentric curriculum that's fucking killing our children before they grow. I'm sorry about the about, about the language, but yeah, like, like they they already armed. They already armed. Take your damn children out of there, man. Okay, all right, cool. So, uh, so yeah, but hey, brother, I, I appreciate you coming on. Let me ask you: this. Are you free later on today? Later on today, man, am I free later on today? She must be in the back. Anyway, um, maybe, man. Just tell me what time, and I can just, just send me a message on Facebook or whatever, and then uh, okay. I try to coordinate with Amira to see if. Uh, what time he's free so we could uh we could build on that but brother thank you so much for coming on everybody thank you for coming uh once joining us once again uh this morning afternoon in uh ghana uh make sure you go to search for huru uh instagram snapchat twitter and facebook also if you're new to this platform please subscribe and please share so we can get the word out also go to dynasamir.com search for huru.com and also go to amazon.com search your name dynasamir please buy a book and if you super chat or join Patreon, uh, you will get a postcard me with the Ashanti. That's Ghana, yeah, yeah. I'm about to say, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. This, I think it's this nice. is Bumasi. So everybody, uh -huh. again, thank you so much for joining us. So Mari, we'll get you back on here hopefully uh, soon, as in today, hopefully. You know, I get everything <laughs> I'm wrong. But again, everybody, thank you so much for coming on. Till next time, peace.